Yes, folks, Maori are not black. So why are they culturally appropriating the so-called black victimhood culture from America? Maori are not victims, quite the opposite. They are privileged. In fact, they're so revered in New Zealand that our apartheid government gave them around a billion dollars in the last year alone. And they've also given them preferential treatment in our healthcare system. And I've posted a link about that in the description below. Now, those protests in America started off with the so-called injustice blacks were receiving at the hands of the police. And then they morphed into destroying businesses, looting and killing people, including cops. And then they morphed into destroying statues and demands for the defunding of the police and for free tertiary education, no less. And then they morphed into chairs, a border within a border. And in New Zealand, they have morphed into everything's racist, everything's racist. And it's been like that for about two weeks now. The Māori Party is also pushing for an inquiry to identify racist New Zealand monuments and street names. It comes as statues of slave traders and once revered colonial figures are toppled across Britain and the US. Māori Affairs reporter Yvonne Tahana has more. Once a master of the sea, Christopher Columbus's role in history has been judged. The statue dumping in the U.S. state of Virginia are part of a growing global movement, challenging former giants of history, including slave traders and owners. Basically, they tell us which people are heroes in that community, and also they tell us who are the people who are forgotten and ignored. Here in Aotearoa, some believe we've yet to fully come to terms with our own history, and Taranaki street names are littered with 19th century military heroes. Trevor Shute was actually the man that led and was part of the scorching of the earth. He was a despicable um, person, is renowned for being, uh, you know, that type of terrible individual. The Māori Party now calling for an inquiry focused on getting rid of racist monuments, statues and names from our colonial past. So we've been asking for a long time to address this issue of outdated monuments that celebrate a period of our history that no longer uh, requires us to be blind to racism. Ah, uh, yes, but somehow it requires us to be blind to our shared history. We're not going to stand for it any longer. Oh, yes, bring in the child expert for, su for some su support. Not a lot being learned by it. It's just, it's just creating more conflict, isn't it? Taranaki, not the only place where statues have caused controversy. This statue in Auckland celebrates a soldier who fought during the Waikato invasion, but is silent on the atrocity that saw 12 Māori murdered. Ultimately, the issue of um, place names and the like actually sits at a, a much more localised level than it... Oh, look over there. It's not my responsibility. Even though she welcomes this, this uh, destruction of our history, she will never, ever take responsibility for it. And of course, they've already got the Hamilton statue, haven't they? A controversial colonial statue has been uprooted in Hamilton by the council after it heard it was about to be targeted by activists. The bronze figure depicts British Navy Commander Captain John Hamilton, and the city is named for him. Kim Baker Wilson reports. The final moments after seven years in Civic Square. The moving truck was here, and so were the onlookers. Many claimed the British naval captain committed atrocities during the Waikato Land Wars. They wanted the statue gone, and in a delicate departure, it was Kakite, Captain Hamilton. When I saw him get lifted, there's a big weight came off my shoulders. The guy was a killer, and, and to represent him here every day so people can Ah, but it's okay to live in a city called Hamilton and get your mail delivered to your home in Hamilton. Overseas. 
statues have been coming down and... All of a sudden we were made aware of a credible threat to Captain Hamilton. So the council decided to take it down before anyone else could, including this Komatua. He took action against it two years ago and said he'd now tear it down. So I had a, a bigger hammer to take to the, to the statue tomorrow, actually. Yeah, so why wasn't he arrested for that credible threat? We had to take swift action to protect the public and to protect public property. Ah, you gutless piece of trash. No democracy, mob rules. Yeah, and of course, these fascists have to go after, after free speech and humour, don't they? The fallout over the death of George Floyd in the, in the US has cast new light on what we watch. Racially loaded themes in TV shows and movies, once acceptable, now deemed racist. Many content providers are recognising the pivotal shift in the civil rights movement and are taking action, as Kim Baker Wilson explains. It had blackface. So we got no option but to take the rest of the week off. And other impersonations. And it's my job to tell her what's happened. Now Come Fly With Me has been grounded by the BBC and Netflix. Say sorry. Do it again. Also gone, Little Britain, one of the BBC's top rating shows. The mood is, you know, a lot of people are saying, dude, this is not funny. Yeah, so who gave those people the right to decide what is funny and, and what is not funny? I thought ratings did that. Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American to win an Oscar. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race. Now on US streaming service HBO Max. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Gone with the wind is gone from its platform. Well, what's changed now, um, to be frank, is uh, white audiences are noticing. And now it's big shows getting deleted and quickly. Now, I, I think some people are worried about, you know, freedom of speech and that sort of thing. But freedom of speech is about governments legally punishing people for speaking out against the government. No, it's not. It's about everyone having the right to free speech, to speak freely about anything they wish. The BBC says old programmes are under constant review and times have changed. And US streamer HBO Max says Gone with the Wind is a product of its time, with racist depictions that were wrong then and wrong now. I'm horrified. And I'm this guy is an absolute disgrace. Sorry. That was comedian Jimmy Fallon just a few days ago saying this skit in blackface 20 years ago was wrong as well. Wow. 20 years ago was wrong. So we might as well cancel every part of our culture from yesterday. That the silence is the biggest crime that white guys like me and the rest of us are doing. Have some wine, Mr. Lang. <laughs> Kiwi screens aren't immune, and TVNZ2 says times have changed. TVNZ says some of its older programs may be insensitive or racist, and while it can't find anything at the moment that may need to be deleted, it says it does need to be vigilant, and it's open to hearing from viewers. Ah, so I assume that includes humour from Maori comedians as well. Or I could be wrong there. We all agreed upon the procedure. Well, yes, it's quite simple, really. Look, all you've got to do is sign here, 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 here. You got that, honky? Oh, my God, he called him a honky. He's a racist. He's got to go. And then there was this. I've been learning, you know what I've been doing? No, what have you been doing? I've been learning how to speak Japanese, eh? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> it's really easy to eh? I show, I see, I, I show you how I learned that because I, I used to watch that, um, what's that program? Um, Shogun. Remember that? Remember that fellow in Shogun? He used to walk around like this. <laughs> and I thought I can do that. <laughs> so I, I want to learn how to speak Japanese. So. 
I went to this old Japanese fellow here, and he said, there are three things you must learn in order to speak Japanese properly. And that's what I said. First, you must learn how to feel the cold. Right? This is so you can get that. <laughs> Secondly, you must have experienced constipation. <laughs> no, 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 listen, no, seriously, hey, serious, no, shut up, listen. <laughs> constipation. This is so you can get that. Thirdly, you must have experienced amnesia. Right? So you forget everything you ever learned like that. And you have perfect Japanese. So I did. And you put all those three ingredients together, you have perfect Japanese. First of all, learn how to feel the cold. Secondly, constipation. Thirdly, amnesia. Perfect Japanese comes out like this. <sighs> <laughs> ah, the guy was brilliant. But that would have to go under the new rules because that may offend some Japanese people. Do you see what's going on here, folks? They're stripping away everything good about our culture. And there's more racism, racism to come in this week or two of racism. The Māori Party has launched an extraordinary attack on National's new leader, Todd Muller, calling him a racist while labelling a coalition deal with National as untenable. National says that's not the case and it'll still try and build a relationship with the party despite the strong language. Political reporter Mikey Sherman has the details. The Māori Party and National once the best of political friends, but those days have gone the aroha along with it. New leader Todd Muller in the firing line. Muller is showing himself as a racist who has no respect for tangata whenua needs. You heard that right. The Māori Party co-leader says Todd Muller, the boy from Te Puna, is racist. Still recovering post-surgery, his deputy coming to his defence. No, he is not. Why would you even respond to someone who calls you a racist? Uh, he is a person who has a deep commitment to Māori. The big call follows a petition by Todd Muller challenging a local hapu on Motiti Island near Tauranga. It had won the backing of the courts to put in place a fishing ban to replenish stocks. Add to that a lack of diversity on National's front bench and criticism over iwi-led checkpoints during COVID-19. National using that as an advantage to, to you know, crawl division and, and create uh, disharmony in a, in a racist form was just disgusting. No, you're disgusting for calling him a racist. It means you have no argument. Yeah, and then came David Clark's turn to play the race card. The minister today admitting institutional racism does exist in our health system. I think there is. I think there is, and I think um, that, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult to point to specific examples. Ah, is that because the institutional racism is against whites? Anyway, to sum up, let's listen to Ali Dakili on this issue. Right. Uh, yep, well on the way to lose the sovereignty, but we don't act now. Absolutely right. Uh, I also want to bring up this, what's been going on as well. Uh, thank you for that, Carol. Uh, is the, the now, of course, from the Black Lives Matter, who actually don't care about black lives, uh, the push positions where they're really fighting and pushing statues to be ripped down and to be taken down because of some sort of historical aspect that's going on. First and foremost, uh, part of my whakapapa contains descent, uh, ancestors who actually fought for uh, um, for Te Raupraha. Te Raupraha was known as quite a brutal guy. You know, the, the, and this is, 
looking at it in context, it was just how things were done where, but he was quite brutal. He managed to get hold of muskets. He managed to smoke, uh, kill off quite a lot of people, grab a whole bunch of land, get a whole bunch of slaves. I do not think that his, that the, uh, the spire that has also his bust, his, so his, his head statue, I do not think that it should be cut down and brought down. I also don't think that these other statues should be brought down. This is history. This is our history. You and I, each of us have a history. Now, I've got a couple of scars on my body. Now, now, if I could remove those scars, I would choose not to remove those scars. They remind me, and they are a good reminder, of times in my life which were a struggle. And if we sit around somehow... Uh, uh, breaking these statues and then then putting them into some warehouse and saying, oh, well, that's safe because it's a museum and we can look at it and things like that. That is that is just wrong. That is, I, I look at that and the analogy I'll use is that that's like basically having a having a family member rape another family member and then everyone just having a, having a bit of a, just be quiet, don't talk about it, just put it in the corner and let's just, every time that there's a party or something like that, this one stays over there and this one stays over there. How's that? Yeah, good. Not good. It is not only is it stupid, it is also actually endemic of the attempt to culturally remove or to remove the culture of New Zealand out and to remove a new type of culture in. Now, folks, now, folks, listen quite carefully here uh, from here on. Now, I will push this as well. Do not forget that we have right now, and it's it's building stronger and stronger and stronger, and, and we have been warning about this for years. The fact that there are groups of academics and politicians, academics and politicians, who are pushing for New Zealand to be split into two. Now, they use the word partnership, and they are wrong. They are absolutely wrong. I was talking with a friend today, and she was saying the same thing. They use the word partnership without talking about te tiriti or waitangi, and they are wrong, because what they want is not partnership aspects. They want co-governance. They want to split New Zealand in half. Of course, you are still going to have to pay for the whole thing, which means you're going to have to pay double over. But that's what they're looking for. They are looking for splitting New Zealand in half to have one side governed by one type of person and one the other side governed by another type of person. Wow, that's absolutely disgusting. It's, it's just wrong. It is not New Zealand. It is not equality. It is the opposite of equality. It is not what the Treaty of Waitangi was written for. It is against, it burns the Treaty of Waitangi. The Treaty of Waitangi was very clear. Article 3. That all the peoples of New Zealand would have the same rights and privileges as the British Empire. Those are the British Empire. It is a powerful document. It is a wonderful joining document. It is a document of he iwi tahi tato, One people moving forward together. And now... Yeah. Now, folks, Elliot Achille is one of the main reasons I'm giving my party vote to the new Conservatives this year. He's a unifier, not a divider. And on most issues, he's pretty much on the mark. It's been a long time since we've had a voice like that in New Zealand, so I'm going to make the most of it. <laughs>